We just spotted a little group of green parrots hanging out on the road. Good way to start the morning. We're gonna start this video by telling you guys about some really cool churches. The 16 wooden churches of Chiloe Island. Three of those churches have been designated World Heritage Sites back in the year 2000. These churches were built in the 17th and 18th century when Spain ruled this area. What is unique about these churches is that they aren't the typical Spanish architecture that you find all over Latin America. Instead, the Jesuits worked with the locals and sourced completely local materials and built these wooden churches completely out of wood, predominant use of the shingle that you see all over the island. They were built with wood that can withstand the rain and humidity of this climate. So, so many of them have lasted the test of time. This is the Church of San Juan. It was built in 1887, and it is one of the three that have been designated a World Heritage Site. It sits right on the edge of a little fishing bay that's low tide right now, so all the boats are dry docked out there. In a tiny little village on the coast of Chiloe Island, a World Heritage Site with just little houses and stores right by it. Now they've definitely done some work rehabilitating these things, but they still sourced that wood locally and followed the exact same structure, I mean, construction techniques. The windows and the cross at the top all look original. <laughs> this was a surprise to us. We didn't know we were gonna find these out on the island. We hope to be able to show you a couple more. We'll see how the journey goes. In the, in the last video, we were in the town of Daukoe and one of the World Heritage Churches was there. We got a glimpse of it. We knew it was a special church, but I don't think we understood the history that much. This area is definitely one of the only areas that the Spanish decided to use local architecture local craftsmen and local materials rather than bringing the Spanish style to a new community. And the result is wooden churches that have stood the test of time. Good morning, Gato. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Venus, he is pretty girl. This little kitty stole my heart. I had to go to the van and get him a handful of kibbles. He doesn't seem like he's starving, but he is appreciating a little treat. <laughs> so, we decided to finish our little tour of the Chiloé Island by doing a tour of these UNESCO churches. And of course, Snow's told you a lot about that. We already did the one in Adalkawa, and we just rolled into the second one into the town of San Juan, this little village. And, you know, we never know what we're gonna expect to see, but obviously we're on an island filled with coast. And we also know from traveling through here that wood is primarily used for construction. So we roll over the hill into the little town of San Juan and there's a shipbuilder building these giant boats out of wood and you can see the ribs and the frames and that's really cool. And of course we have all the water birds everywhere and then we come around to the big wooden church which is beautiful. And again, Snow probably already told you this, but the churches were built here in Chiloé before the roads were built. And so these were for these little communities, especially on some of the smaller islands, these were the meeting places, the community centers where the markets were set up and stuff like that. And 
and just to see how the city is kind of built up the little town it's not really a city the little town is built up on the coast and then when you look out in these bays you can see the tidal waters just move so much and right now it's low tide but there's all sorts of beautiful water birds and I believe I've actually seen more of the black-headed swans here than I've seen anywhere and so the water birds here are absolutely stunning off in the distance we can see the mussel and the clam farms that just litter the bays up here we didn't see any sea lions or seals we're not that close to the water with the tide being out but what a little beautiful stop I'm excited to see what the next little town has in store for us well, we were plugging the next destination, the next little town, into Google Maps. We spotted a cascada. So we're taking a detour. Don't go chasing <laughs> waterfalls. <laughs> Gonna go see if we can show y'all a waterfall on the, this, this Sunday morning drive we're on. I hope we don't get a copyright strike for that beautiful <laughs> rendition. TLC. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna call this Cascada to Koiwe. Don't know if that's right or not, but that's what we're going with. It's not a very long detour. The road has been average for a dirt road, and we're almost there. All right, I love it. One of the fancier trail maps that we've ever seen. But you can see there's a little mirror door. It's 50 meters up to that. Looks like you have a good view of the Cascada. But actually to the waterfall, 150 meters, we will be going there maybe up to the terraza as well. 3,000 pesos a piece, about a little more than $3. You ready to go? Let's go do it. 150 meters. It's cold here, guys. It we is cold this morning. morning. It was 40 degrees. For you guys in the northern hemisphere, I know you're rolling into spring, or you're in spring, getting ready to roll into summer. It's fall, getting ready to roll into winter down here. But I think we'll get warmed up doing this little walk. All right, let's go down to the little bullet, bulletaria. Ticket booth. Ticket booth, and see if we can get in this thing. There it is, right past the ticket booth. We're gonna try to get a little closer. Choke away, choke. Choke. Walk. The OI makes a unique sign. I don't know what it is. Choke. There we go. We got the stairs. Tokoyway. Tokoy. Tokoyway. That's what we're calling it. Tokoyway. All right. I gotta say, we're out on a Sunday stroll. So on a driving day, it's nice to have a little stop like this to get out of the van stretch your legs here's some calm in the nature in this case the roar of a nice waterfall it's a pretty sight no doubt just what i needed this morning you're gonna climb out on those rocks <laughs> Probably not. My shoes are wet enough from walking around in the wet grass. I should have learned by now. I mean, it's been over 20 years that I've been hanging around this Kurt guy. I should not have issued him any sort of a challenge to climb on some rocks right in front of a raging waterfall with freezing cold water. Oh, I turned my head and there he is. <laughs> Y'all can probably hear it, but the power coming from this waterfall definitely making a nice strong breeze and it's cool and it's pretty. Look at Kurt out there. What do you guys think? Should I give it a try? <laughs> All right, I'm getting nervous. Be careful.
That's far enough. All right, this is a fun little spot. You can come down and play by the waterfall. And then there's also some little trails down by this little river or stream, a little bubbling brook. And in, with these little red flowers right here, and we've seen these all over on the island, but there's a bunch of little hummingbirds flying around, squeezing the nectar out of these things. So we have determined this is a nice place to give the kitties a little walk. When we were wild camping at the waterfront in the fishing village, there just wasn't anywhere to walk them. So we have left the waterfall. What a nice little surprising detour that was. Get out in nature a little bit, hear some water trickling. But we are back on the road and we're headed to our destination we were already planning to go to. And another surprise, we just passed one of the other 16 historical wooden churches on the island. It is not one of the World Heritage ones, but fascinating nonetheless. So we got a shot of it as we drove by. Now we are back on the track. All right, the third World Heritage site, Iglesia de Tenon. It was built from 1877 to 1902. They uh, did some work on it in 1920. In 1999, it was declared a national monument of Chile. And in the year 2000, it received the world heritage status. And I think it's my favorite. It's got the blue stars, the white front, three crosses. Yeah, this one's my favorite. Yesterday, after we saw the third church, my favorite one, the blue one with the stars, we decided to call it a day. Parked right there in that little town on the beach, turned off the cameras, and just kind of relaxed. It is now the next day, and we got up bright and early this morning, and we are back on the road, and we are northbound. One thing I don't think we've told y'all about that is kind of cool, and I think it's a cultural thing for most of Chile, at least all the parts we've been in, is you see all these chimneys on these houses. And that may seem normal. I mean, in the wintertime, it gets cold down here. They have a fireplace. But those chimneys serve a much bigger purpose because it's not a normal fireplace. It's called a fogon, F-O-G-O-N. And it's a big, giant chunk of metal We've seen one up close that I think we filmed. Hopefully I can find that footage and put it in here from a past video. It just sits in the middle of the living room or the kitchen, or it's even in restaurants. It'll just be right in the middle of the restaurant. And it looks like a giant cast iron stove. And it has many purposes. One, yes, it is a stove. The fire is going all the time and they'll just sit their pots on top of it and that's how they cook. That's why a lot of the little roadside restaurants are called fogones down here. 
It also is how they heat their house in the winter. And it's a good heater. The problem is it's always running, even in the summer. So I bet it makes these places a little warm sometimes. It's also how they heat their water if they're fortunate enough to have a radiator system in their house running through the walls. They can heat their water and the rest of their rooms. But more in the rural areas, the only room that's gonna be heated is wherever that fogon is. That's where they cook, that's where they hang out, that's where they stay warm. So it's just kind of interesting. Yes, it's cool, so it's normal. It's cool weather, so it's normal to see all the smoke coming out of these little chimneys. But I bet it'd be a little odd to see all the smoke in the summertime, wouldn't it, Kurt? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that was an interesting thing down here, at least to me, so I wanted to share it with you. And the next thing is, we are northbound. I've told you that. But what I have not told you is we are about to wind down our time on this magical little island of Chiloe, which more than surprised us. We came in by ferry on the southern end into that little ferry town. It was a little bit bigger and more crowded than we like. So we only hung out there one night. We went out into the forest, uh, had the magical experience with the little teeny tiny poodoo deer. Kurt went on some night hikes. We went on some hikes to see some waterfalls. Just enjoyed the beautiful rainforest type atmosphere of everything being alive and green. We drove over to the Pacific coast in the central part of the island. Kurt went out on that hike that was a little bit too much for me, but the video was amazing to see it. It was beautiful. The rocky cliffs along the coast. I did get to take a walk along the coast over there on the Pacific before we left, so that's good. And then we headed over to the fishing villages on the Gulf side, the east side of this island as we started heading north. And I have to tell you, when we stumbled up on that little fishing town of Dalkaway, I just fell in love with that place. We stayed way longer than we expected. The culture and the atmosphere was absolutely amazing. And if we could have made time stand still, and we didn't have to worry about visa expiration dates, I think we might still be there. But our journey puts us back on the road. And then we took you to see all the churches earlier in this. But now our next stop is the ferry. And we will be leaving this little island of Chiloe, headed to the mainland and headed to our next adventure. I can highly recommend if you're looking for an off the beaten path type vacation, come spend a week in Chiloe. Find you a little bed and breakfast, rent a car, and tour this island for yourself because it is epic. And it is an up and coming tourist destination. So it won't be long that it'll be this quaint and not crowded. Don't you agree, Kurt? I agree 100%. All right, we're headed to the ferry. And with that, we're gonna wind this video down. We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Cheers. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.